Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about my test results of this machinist X99 PR9 motherboard. And as you can see, this motherboard has absolutely minimalistic layout with absolute minimum of the functions. The VRM heatsink is also very tiny, so originally I did not plan to bother with this motherboard. But because of its price, many people, many subscribers, many of my Discord members asked me to test the motherboard. So here you go, I bought the motherboard and I tested the motherboard. As always, all the detailed tech specification with everything I have tested will be available in my slides by the end of the video, but here I'm just going to go through the most important parts of the motherboard, so basically the most important things you need to know about Machinist X99 PR9. So, immediately after I booted into BIOS of X99 PR9, I was very positively surprised. The motherboard has RAM timings configuration straight from the BIOS. It is also possible to use XMP settings if your memory has XMP profile. Then, the motherboard also has options to enable or disable CPU cores. We also have above 4G decoding and we have resizable bars right from the BIOS. So far, this is the best BIOS I have seen on a Chinese X79 or X99 motherboard that comes straight from China. The good news did not end here. I have tested every single slot and every single port on the motherboard and everything just works. I have seen multiple different reports that people say that the USB 3.0 header for the front panel works as USB 2.0 speed, but in my case both the rear side USB 3 ports as well as the front panel USB 3.0 connector, they both work at USB 3.0 speed. Very often Chinese motherboards have problems with the USB 3.0, especially when using high-speed external SSD drives like I do for my testing. Sometimes the system would lag, sometimes the system would reboot, and sometimes the speed would be reduced to USB 2.0. In case of Machine U699 PR9, I did not get any of these issues. Maybe it is related to the fact that my motherboard has a Z97 chipset and some of the issues will be here or they will reappear if you receive motherboard with another chipset. Unlike most of the Chinese X79 and X99 motherboards, X99 PR9 supports smartphone function on the both of the 4-pin fan headers. Unfortunately, it is not yet possible to control fan speed of 3-pin fans, but if you have 4-pin PWM fans, X99 PR9 has two headers and you can adjust fan speed for both of the headers individually straight from the BIOS. Now let's talk about the bad things. X99 PR9 is far from perfect and the first problem is that the sleep mode doesn't work. The next big problem is that the motherboard has only two memory channels. Even though in CPU-Z you can see that uh, we have quad memory channel, in reality it is just two memory channels, which can be confirmed by ADA64 memory test. It is very disappointing and if the motherboard would have four memory channels, I would confidently recommend it, but with the two memory channels it is a compromise. Finally, in the BIOS we also have overclocking options, but they do not work. I have tested with i7-5820K and as soon as I enable overclocking, the motherboard simply refuses to start. With i7-5820K we also have suboptimal PCI Express layout. i7-5820K and i7-6800K have only 28 PCI Express lanes and PCI Express lanes routing on X99 PR9 just like on Many of the Chinese X99 motherboards is not optimal. The first PCI Express X16 slot works as X8, and these X8 lanes are the ones which are the far behind, not the front 8 PCI Express lanes. And that means that graphics cards which have X4 or X8 connection are not going to work with the CPUs that have only 28 PCI Express lanes. In the past it was not that big of a deal, but right now we have graphics cards such as RX 6400, RX 6600, RX 7600 and RTX 4060. All of these graphics cards are not gonna work with i7-5820K and i7-6800K. Still, it is not that big of a deal because most of you are going to pair Machine E699 PR9 with a Xeon CPU. And all of the Xeon CPUs have full 40 PC Express lanes. In that configuration, the PC Express X16 slot works as X16. 
Now let's talk about the VRAM. Under this minuscular VRAM heatsink, we have basically a copy-paste from Machinist X99 RS9. The only difference is that one of the MOSFETs got upgrade from 48 to 50 amperes. With such configuration, the VRAM overheats and cooks itself rather quick under severe load. That's why I decided to test it with such kind of a box or stock cooler, or you can also call it like a flower style cooler. And what's good about it is that the cooler dispenses air all around the CPU cooler. And that means that the air goes straight from the CPU cooler into the VRM heatsink and blows through the VRM and the VRM heatsink, thus cools it down just like it cools down the CPU. In this configuration, testing with the E5 2697V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock, after 30 minutes of ADA64 stress test, using my thermometer, I have measured up to 70 degrees Celsius. So, even though the VRM is not optimal, with proper cooling, it is possible to keep it cool. Also, I can mention that I measure VRM temperature from the front and the back side of the motherboard, but because it is very annoying to measure the back side while the PC is running, I do not record it with my phone, because I need both of my hands to do the measurements. Since the VRM was tested with E5 2697V3 Turbo Boost Unlocked, it is obvious that Turbo Boost Unlock is possible. So, in case of X99 PR9, we don't have anything specific, Everything works just as usual. You can read or write the motherboard BIOS using FPT straight from the Windows. There is just one catch. The motherboard uses non-standard BIOS chip, and for FPT application recognizing the BIOS chip, you need to add information about this BIOS chip into the fparts.txt file. If you don't want to bother with this additional modification, you can just use my application called Mi899, that already has modified FPT application to support Machinist X99 PR9. This BIOS is unfortunately not compatible with Ultimate Party Tool, so it's not possible to adjust the voltage from the BIOS. And that's why I had to do multiple different BIOS options with a different undervolting level. For most of you it's not an issue though, if you need Turbo Boost Unlock, just use the standard BIOS modification with minus 50-50 mV CPU voltage reduction. So, all in all, even though Machinist X99 PR9 is not a perfect and not ideal motherboard, it has only two memory channels and it does not support sleep mode, I can still recommend it, especially for those who are looking for a budget option to use with the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. V4 CPUs do not require Turbo Boost Unlock, and thus you don't need to mess with the BIOS at all. Just install the CPU, configure RAM timings, enable resizable bar, and enjoy. On the other hand, it is very important to understand that my test results were conducted with this particular single sample of Machinist X99 PR9. Maybe I was lucky to get a motherboard with a Z97 chipset, and if you get motherboard with B85 chipset, maybe USB 3.0 ports will not work for you, or maybe your motherboard sample will have horrific quality and audio card and network card will start to die out. Whenever you are buying something from AliExpress, you need to understand that you are risking to get some crap, even if you find some online reviews like mine, where I tell you that Machine X99 PR9 is a decent motherboard for its price tag of 45-55 years. And with this I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was useful and interesting. Bye for now.